I went to a lawyer to see my wife, found out she was pregnant at that time. So I went to Walmart Ridge, and a cousin of mine, he was a lawyer, and he fixed out an affidavit to exempt me from the service till after the baby was born. So two weeks after Gilbert was the oldest son, when he was born, was Dr. Turner before the end that, that my son was born. So then from there, here I went. <laughs> yeah, we had KP duty. And so I, when, if you called on me, I will, if you had, you might be the one that was a KP duty and you had to peel potatoes all that morning to feed 180 people. Uh, miners would uh, find the mine field on the first hill. And before that would happen, they would hide mines under one, and you had to take a bayonet and probe in under the mine to see if it would booby trap. For if it booby trap, I wouldn't be here today. We had the M1 rifle. And I had the mine detector and carry it. And when I got this mine field, we had to uh, uh, pick up the uh, mines and carry them out then to give, give uh, the tank battalion so uh, notice it, it was clear for them to see one one mine would blow the track off of okay. So that uh, we had uh, there's 18 teller mines that was across this road. And me and Don, he, he wasn't even started. So I, I picked two of them up and carried them. Well, I understand that, that too, I had 10 pounds of nitroglycerin on my right. And it was uh, one pound, I don't know whether you know anything about weight and everything, but one pound of dynamite, my nitroglycerin is equal to one pound of dynamite. And I had 10 on my right side. Yeah, you know, it's scary, but you just, you just more or less had to forget everything and take whatever was down the road. Yeah, you know, we had a pretty close call. We had the East Platoon had a truck weapons car, okay. See, it was a third of our company. It was just a, uh, uh, Dynamite and things like that, but uh, there's our fort squad, it was a uh, demolition squad. And so when we'd find the mine field that way, we had to clear it out and put a yellow tape up you know, on each side where the uh, tanks would know that they weren't no mines in there. Or if they entered it, they would have been loaded up. They come back, and I was picked out the, the company to go back because they had just liberated the uh, ammunition plant. And uh, their ammunition would penetrate better than theirs. They were trying to find a formula for it. So mine and Donald's job was to go back and clear the so we went in this plant and we drove ten mile an hour down the aisle in the Jeep, you know, it was so large in that ammunition plant and I believe one of the safest bigger than that uh, wall safe over there and I found a electric typewriter in it. And so 
the uh, government men gave me permission to send it back home. So I took it in our weapons carrier that carried everything else on. I laid it up right next to the back seat on it. And so we heard the SS, I mean, a uh, shell coming in one day. We knew what it was. And so we bailed out of the truck. And that shell hit right on hit my typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> so that ended my trying to get in thing. Back. I thought, well, if I can get myself back, uh, and when we got further up in Germany, and uh, we was taking over a little town, and uh, they had a long train that was not hard as wide as this uh, room is here, about 80 feet long, and they had uh, Jews and Jews. That was the ones they were trying to get rid of in Europe. And so they, uh, uh, we liberated the tank. They had the trench dug and people laying down there. And they had a well nose there ready to just go in and scoop it up and cover it over. And so we got it into it and took it over before they had changed. We had uh, civilians come up there and march around. And the women, especially, a lot of them had just find out. And they, they wasn't any further from here to uh, Main Street. And they didn't know all this was happening. Yeah, and try to write her a letter every day. And what? So I, I don't know whether she got all of them or not, but it took days, you know, to get mail back and forth. And I just can't, uh, I'm thinking it was loud and tell if they cut it all. If you said that, you wasn't supposed to. You did tell them more or less about your health or things like that. It's just something I really can't hardly describe it. And she was telling me how her and my older son at that time, he was going on two years old. And of course he was two weeks old when I left. They just call them E.S. Liberty Shield. Uh, See, so they, when they knew it needed a lot of shields, these bigger ships in, they used them some, but they made a smaller Liberty Shield and had put the returnies like myself on and bring them back home. Well, when we got to New York, they told us the night before, said around midnight, we would get the skylights of New York City. And when we got up there this early that morning, and uh, they had a welcome home shield that had a big sign all one end of it down there that says, Welcome home, soldier. And so the, uh, everybody got to get on one side of the ship and it was uh, about to tilt over, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they had to put part of them on the other side of the ship.